Are you a history buff? Stay with us as we explore a three-week tour of the British Isles. And as always, folks, if you enjoy this content, please like, subscribe, and turn on all notifications to get notified each time we post. My guest today is Colleen Atherton. Colleen is owner-operator of Eagle Wings Travel located in Wichita, Kansas, and she has been meeting the needs of her clients since 2005. To Colleen, vacations are much more than getting on an airplane. One has to experience all the sights, sounds, and flavors of a particular destination. Colleen has visited over 85 countries, cruised the seven seas, and visited all but one of the continents. Hi, Colleen. Welcome to RTE Travel Talk. Hi, Ken. It's good to be back. It's wonderful to have you with us, Colleen. So, Colleen, a viewer sent us a message just recently, and they're looking at a British Isles tour for a multi-generational family. And I know that you just recently returned from just such a tour, and yeah. I thought you could enlighten our viewers and listeners on just about what that cruise, was, that tour was like, and uh, give us a few pointers. Yes, I'd be happy to. Oh, super. On this particular trip, I went outside the city of London, which is where most people start when they go to the UK. But okay. this is for those who want to do something beyond London. Okay. So you started in London. And how? first of all, how long How long was the trip, Colin? It was about three weeks. Oh, really? Wow. That's quite a, quite a trip. Now, did you plan all of that yourself or did you have a, a tour company do some of that for you? I planned most of it myself, but a part of it was with a tour company. Okay. Okay. So why don't you, why don't you take, give us a day by day, blow by blow version of it. Okay. I started in London, as you said, and did some day trips to Cotswold, which is a little village, little villages outside of London that kind of keep their traditional uh, thatched roof houses. And it's just, very uh, scenic and pretty out there. Then uh, I also went a day trip to Bath, which is the old Roman town of Bath. It's an old Roman city that okay. has a lot of history. After that, I took a train and went north to Newcastle. And from there, I did some tours with Isles Tours, which I have to say is one of the best guides I have encountered in all of my travels and I have been to 101 countries. So, uh, wow. that's saying a lot, but <laughs> he, he knows his history. He knows his Roman history, especially. And he took me out to see Hadrian's wall, which was one of the highlights of my trip because that has been around a long time, obviously. Hadrian's Wall was built by Emperor Hadrian, the Roman Emperor Hadrian, and, and that was back in 122 AD. So right. that, that it's still, parts of it are still standing is just amazing to me. It was very windy and cold, so I would highly recommend that if you go in March, as I did, that you bring your wool long johns. <laughs> <laughs> I would expect... Normally, Colleen, uh, when would be a good time for most people if they're thinking of taking a British Isles tour? I usually recommend going in April or May or even okay. September or October because that way you miss the summer crowds and right. yet the weather's a little nicer and things are all open and available. And you don't need it to be exceptionally hot. Right. When, when you're doing this type of a tour, I or, would expect. Or exceptionally cold, as it was when I was there. <laughs> so obviously March is not a recommendation. And it's okay for the hardy folks who right. don't mind wearing the long johns and the, you know, down coat and gloves and all of that. But sure. So where, where were we off to next? Well, then uh, the same guide took me to Lindensfarne, which is the little island off of the east coast of northern England. And, and its claim to fame is that it was the first place that the Vikings raided Europe. And they there was a monastery there that they completely annihilated and brutally murdered all of the monks. And so it and and you know when you some people say, well, you know, I'm not really that interested in churches and stuff, but 
the historical aspect of it is that that completely changed the DNA of Europe. Wow. Wow. So what you're saying is that this type of a tour is very much about the history. The one I did certainly was. Right. Well, after that, I went to York, which is one of the best preserved uh, medieval towns in England. That was very interesting. After I went to York, I, I took the train to uh, Manchester, and that's okay. where I met up with the group that I, a uh, tour group I was with, and they took us down to Conway, Conway, which is a little town in Wales. Right. And it's known for Conway Castle. And it's just a very quaint little seaside village that they tell tell you that it's the smallest house in, in Britain. It was kind of cute to see, but the castle was amazing and, and very interesting to a history buff. Right. So the tour that you met up with, who was the tour by? It was with uh, Scepter Tours. Scepter Tours. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now you talked about, you talked earlier about, well, we've got Scepter Tours and Isles Tours, you said it was? Yes, that's okay. right. I would tend to think, Colleen, that for the uninitiated, a guided tour would be a very important thing for this type of vacation. Would it or would it not? I Is agree. It? That yeah. would be the that would be the ideal setup. Right on this type of tour, what what was the, what was the age bracket? There were about twenty five of us on this particular tour. They ranged in age from thirties to seventies, so it was okay. all ages. And families? No, it was just uh, mostly adults. Of course, I, I I suppose that would also depend on the time of year as well. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Now. On this type of a tour, is it something that you'd recommend for families or like for people with you know, younger children or in the teenage range? Is it, is that something that you think it, it, it would be a recommendation? Would people be in? Would the kids be? Or would the kids be bored stiff? Uh, probably. <laughs> 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 yeah, I if if I have families with children. I tend to keep them in London or one of the bigger cities where kids kind of can relate to what they see in their history books and right. geography books. Right. This particular type of tour is more for the history buffs and people that really want to take a deep dive into yes. British culture. Okay. Yes. That have been to London and now they want to see something else. Okay. Okay. That makes sense. Uh what were some of the attractions along the way that you would consider a do not miss? A restaurant on the uh, Thames there in London, which was pretty unique. It had these little pods on the river and the, the view of London Bridge lit up at night was pretty, pretty fantastic. Even though it was cold, because you're in these little glass pods, it was still warm and you still got the view. and it made it kind of special. Mm -hmm. Of course, the food, you know, the little pasties that <laughs> they serve and and the hot cross buns. Some of us are old enough to know that little nursery rhyme. So that was kind of fun. <laughs> right on. So the food, the food, the food was good. <laughs> yes. Good for the most most part throughout the trip. Yeah, it was good. It was good. So where else did we go? We went to Liverpool, which, of course, is the capital of the Beatles history <laughs> and and we stayed at the Hard Rock Hotel, and we went to the Cavern Club where they first performed. Oh, okay. And so it was all about the Beatles there. And we also went to the soccer stadium there. That was pretty interesting, and they're pretty adamant about their soccer team. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> After that, we went to the Lake District, which was very scenic and pretty, and stayed at a resort there on the lake. Okay. And then we went on to Edinburgh, which, of course, has lots more history that I love. And and we got to tour with and some of the guides we had were they dressed up in period clothing. And, and that really made right. made it special. And when we toured Edinburgh, of course, we got to see the famous little Sky Terrier, Bobby, who was uh, belonged to a policeman. And he would go around with him on his night watch and. When his master died, he laid on his grave and guarded his grave for 14 years until he died. And so they 
buried him there in the in the, uh, the cemetery. It's called Gray Friars Bobby because Gray Friars was the name of the church, the cathedral there. Okay. And as we know, back in those days, the the churches had graveyards were connected to the church. So this was in <laughs> in Scotland. Yes. Right? Which begs the question. When we talk about the British Isles, for the benefit of our viewers, of our viewers and listeners, what are the British Isles? The British Isles consist of four countries: so England, Scotland, Wales, and Northern Ireland. They are separate countries. Right. So, did you like? Did you have any issues with crossing borders? No. Yeah. There's not even to go to Ireland, which is not part of the UK. Right on. So Scotland, Edinburgh, Greyfriars, Bobby, where did we go to next? Then I went over to Dublin, got to experience uh, the oldest pub in Dublin, and I had dinner there, and they and they sing Irish music in the evenings, and that was fun. Did you have a Guinness? No, I didn't, but <laughs> <laughs> you could. You definitely could. It's everywhere. And what was your favorite part about Dublin? I went to Christ Church, which is a very, very old church there in Dublin. And they, the choir from that church was one of the first, well, was the first to uh, publicly sing uh, Handel's Hallelujah Chorus. That's fascinating. And you got out into the country a bit in Ireland. Did you visit any other places in Ireland other than du Dublin? I went to Kilkenny and down through their national park there, and and that was very pretty and scenic. I liked that. Down through Glendalough and Wicklow. Yeah. And those places? Yes. Okay. Yeah, Glendalough and Wicklow. Yes. Was that part was that part of a tour, Colleen, or was were you on your own? I was on my own. So how were you getting around? I took day trips from Dublin. I stayed in Dublin and then took day trips each day. Okay. And were you, was this by bus or by? Not a big bus, but a small bus. Yeah. Right. I guess where I was going with that is, did you rent a car? No, I didn't. I, w I was going to, but since they drive on the wrong side, I uh, chickened out. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I have I have to tell you, mm -hmm. uh, where, where I'm leading with that line of questioning is, we had the experience of driving in Dublin and down through the Irish roads in a rent a car. And I've always, I've always considered, I've always considered myself a, a, a fabulous driver, but I actually had beads of sweat rolling down, and I, my, my poor wife, I think, chewed off half her fingernails on those, on those small roads, driving on the wrong side of the road yeah. in a car with the, with a standard shift on the wrong side. It's, it takes a bit of getting used to. Yeah, that was more than I wanted to tackle this <laughs> yeah. time around. Well, the thing, the thing, the thing of it is with that, the transportation and the buses over there are, are all great. Anyway, if you're concentrating so much on driving, you're not going to see much, and you have exactly to, you're going to miss a lot by because you, you have to keep your you have to concentrate so much in your driving. I agree, and and the train system in the UK is fabulous, and and it's easy to navigate. And so, did Dublin, did Ireland wrap up the trip for you? Yes. I flew home after the after three weeks over there. So, what advice, Colleen, do you would you have for people that are looking to do this type of a tour or visit the British Isles? Well, obviously, my advice would be to find a good agent who can help you navigate all of the specifics. Where to go? Where to stay? Right. Exactly. Who to do the tours with? And that's why I do these trips because I like to try different. Mm -hmm. guides and different companies and see which ones give the best service. If somebody if somebody were to come to you, what, what would your process be if they were looking for something like this, Colin? Well, first of all, I'd find out the demographics, you know, right. with the age and everything. And and then I'd ask what their interests are, because that would that would really help me, guide me in which direction to take them. Because if they just want to see the main sites in London, then then we would go that direction. If they're wanting something outside of the city, then we can go right. go somewhere else. Okay. Who would you say that this tour is best suited for, this type of a tour? Oh, I would say probably adults that are interested in history and like scenery. I would, I would tend I would tend to agree with that. Do you have any packing tips for this type of tour? 
as I mentioned, if you're going to go in March, take your wool long johns and your down coat. If you go in when the weather's a little nicer, then, you know, you wouldn't have to pack all that. But if you're going to hike the Hadrian's Wall, you might need a walking stick. Okay. And, and what about currency, Colleen? Do, is it, do they accept U.S. dollars or do you suggest switching to pounds or euros? How does that work? Yeah, when you're in the UK, you'll definitely want to switch to pounds. Right. And when you go to Ireland or Europe, you'll have euros. But most of the time, I recommend that people get a credit card that doesn't charge a conversion fee right. and use that most of the time. Right. So you pretty much could use a credit card in most establishments. Yes. You went. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. We were we were on this tour for roughly three weeks. I guess I probably don't have to ask you if you saw it all. <laughs> well, actually, I didn't really see it all. No. Yeah. Uh, there's more to see. Wow. Ho hopefully, I'll go back with my daughter who wants to go see Ireland before okay. long. Right on. So, Colleen, this is absolutely fantastic information. What do you say to folks that still might be a little skittish about traveling still? I think if you find a good agent, they can hook you up with a group. And, and that tends to make people feel a little more secure if they're right. with a group or have a host along. Yes, because the host can is there to help you along the way and alleviate some potential problems that might that might arise not not yeah. not that any will but right right and and make suggestions for dining and and that kind of thing too mm -hmm. so we mentioned at the start start of the segment that you love to travel i have to know what's next on the bucket list for colleen i have always wanted to go to oberammergau that is a play that they put on about jesus christ of the course and Yes, the Passion Play, and they only do it every 10 years. So this is going to be my year. Have you got plans? Are you heading across? I, I am in August. Wonderful, wonderful. So, Colleen, if people wanted to reach out to you about a vacation or a tour like this, what's the best way to get hold of you? The best way to get hold of me is through my email, which is eaglewingstravel at gmail.com. Okay. Or they can call me 316-214-5426. But I typically answer my emails, even if I happen to be out on a tour or out of the country. So that would be the ideal way. Super, super. And I'll leave that contact information in the description as well. Well, Colleen, this has been absolutely great information. I look forward to hearing all about the, the passion play. So we'll have to have you back to regale us with your adventures over there. Okay. Sound like a plan? I look forward to it. All right. So with that, Colleen, I'm just going to wish you safe and happy travels for all your next land and cruise adventures. May the wind always be at your back. And I hope to see you in an English or Irish pub sometime real soon. Thank you, Ken. Take care. And that wraps things up for today, folks. A very special thanks to my guest, Colleen Atherton of Eagle Wings Travels. I'll leave Colleen's contact information in the description if you'd like to reach out to Colleen about a cruise or land tour vacation. If you'd like to reach us, send a question to questions at realtravelexperts.com. Visit our website, realtravelexperts.com, or simply leave a comment. We always respond. And as always, folks, if you enjoy this content, a like, subscribe, and a ring of the bell is certainly appreciated and helps us to spread the word. So until next time, happy travels. <laughs>